the Beckford Life on Lens podcast. Um, it's me, Amy, hosting again. Dave's behind the camera and recording. We've got some wonderful guests with us. Um, and as it's the Beckford Lifelong Learners podcast, I always ask if there's something that you have learned recently. So if you can introduce yourselves and tell us something that you've learned recently, just to kick us off, that would be great. Thank you. Good. Who's okay. going first? I'll go <laughs> yes, first. Mike. Everyone looked at me. Um, I'm Mike Barnes. I'm the Senko at Beckfoot School. What have I learnt recently? Okay, we had a lovely trust training day on Friday. And one of the things I learned was I attended a phonics session. And I thought I knew quite a bit about phonics. But it was really nice to hear the speaker talk about patience and repetition. And I think that helped me a lot. And it helped me actually today with a young person with reading because in secondary schools you don't get a heck of a lot of training in your training about early years reading so it was really very helpful so that was good oh that's good I think I went to one about reading and it tied in really well with what um, Luke's doing in, with literacy at yes. the moment here in school and just reminding me as a as a mum I was like oh that's really useful for Emmy mm. but actually also that's just because they're at secondary school we assume oh they can read they can do this they know what that means yes. so just remind it's just a reminder that where all we are all it literally we always say we're, we're all teachers of English but we're all teachers of reading and we yeah, all need yeah. to support that it's really important yeah, yeah cool that's, that's a lovely one who's going next shall I go go on I'll Claire go you go next um, so, hello I'm Claire um, I'm Deputy Senko here at Beckfoot and one of the things from the training day um, that we attended on Friday um, was about how to create an effective team and how to work really effectively as a team which all the way through the session, I was obviously thinking about the SEND team and how effective we're working as a team um, and just making sure that we're being really inclusive and making sure that everybody's voices are heard within a team and making sure that everyone's got a, a chance to speak up and, and share their views yeah. and that they feel like they're being listened to. Um, so I took a lot away from that and that's something that we're trying as a SEND team to make sure we're really mm. valuing and really incorporating yeah. within our practice. Everyone's got a voice, haven't they? They need to hear it to make sure that we're working in the best way we can for the kids. And us guys being yeah. in leadership, we need to make sure that we're listening to everybody within within that team as well. Definitely. Extra importance for well, I won't say too much, but with what you've been doing working recently, on, yeah. I suppose that's been extra important. Um, and last but not least... Okay, uh, my name is Helen Morgan and I'm an educational consultant um, and also um, a coach and I've been working with the SEN team on instructional coaching uh, but the, the, probably the thing I've learned most recently, I went to a conference um, and I was a delegate um, for two of the days and I went to a session on reflective practice um, and one of the questions that the person who was um, leading the the CPD asked us was, are you a person who makes things happen or are you a person that things happen to? And it really made me think about um, times when I feel stuck uh, because I think we all feel stuck sometimes and the importance of, of being proactive within that. Um, and I think now you know I've had a couple of situations recently where I've been stuck with something and it's just really helped my mindset to go do you know I need to be somebody who makes something happen mm. here rather than it just happened to me yeah. so that was my big reflection and learning from there. Oh, that's brilliant that's lovely not being I suppose not being passive just being mm. active in, in everything we're, we're doing brilliant thank you so much guys that's lovely and what are you i alluded to it a little bit earlier there's been a big project that's been going on um within the inclusion faculty do you want to tell us what you're here to talk to us about today yeah well i guess the background to it is it's it's instructional coaching which is obviously why helen's here in, the, in, in school today um but the, the background to it is we've, we have a, a good team of, of teaching assistants, really strong team, with a huge range of experience. And the bigger challenge in education is, is really to, is to make the most of that team for the benefit of the young people in classrooms. So it was identified really that instructional coaching would be a tool and a method and a way of trying to support the teaching assistants in being as effective as possible. I think that's, that's what it's really about. 
and, and Helen's been helping us understand the mechanics of, well, what does that look like? How do we do that? You know, that, that sort of thing, because the concept of instructional coaching was, was new to Claire and I and, and the rest of the team. Yeah. I think what's been really interesting with it is, um, obviously, I work as what some people might call a traditional coach. I also work with schools on instructional coaching, but doing instructional coaching with TAs and thinking about it from a SEN perspective was brand new uh-huh. for all of us. So we've had to really go back to the research about instructional coaching and think about what does that tell us. Then we've had to think about the context of the school. Then we've had to think about relationships. Yeah. Um, and we've had to, to really kind of work together to, to figure it out. Um, and yep. And again, when you talk about what are we learning at the minute, I think we're learning... We're learning lots. We're learning on the job, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that's, in some respects, that's the interesting bit. Yeah. Well, one of my follow-up questions, usually with these podcasts, is also how are you research informed? What research have you done? And as you mentioned, there is so much research out there about instructional coaching, and we're becoming quite well informed mm-hmm. here as as teachers at, yeah. at Beckfoot um, but how, how on earth did you go about applying that research what did you do how did you make it how did you make it work how did you make it happen I suppose so we looked at research that the EEF have done and a paper on best use of teaching assistants um, is it Blatchford yeah, yeah. Um, who and we, we, we drew all of the information that is out there on what a good teaching assistant looks like and how we can effectively use teaching assistants in the classroom. Um, alongside our teaching and learning practices that we've already got embedded at Beckfoot to create policy, yeah. target performance on what a good Beckfoot teaching assistant looks like in the classroom. Yeah. And then we've broken it down. So we've got the Beckfoot, the, the TA Beckfoot way um, alongside the teacher's back footwear. Um, and we've just broken that down into step-by-step targets that we can then utilise within instructional coaching. Oh. Um, so we've got three so far. Only two have gone live. Um, so there's a third one still to come. Um, and then we're just taking it a couple of weeks at a time, looking at small step targets. Perfect. That sounds like so a similar process to yeah. out to the instructional coaching yeah. route we've been going as as teachers, but applied specifically to the yeah. TA. What are the targets that? Well, first of all, what what have you developed as the TA way at Beckford? What does it what does that look like well, it, here? It looks like we've actually been, we've, we've we've bid for and got some time for the teaching assistants, which is key because you've got to. You've got to attend to this and give it priority yeah. because it's something we feel really important. So um, the teaching assistants have a time in a fortnight's timetable where they are allowed to, to sit and we're in triads, we're in triangles with, with a coach and two mm-hmm. coaches um, and the coach will have walked through lessons uh, in the previous two weeks um, and they will have observed practice according to whatever we're looking at at the time and then we've had a a safe and secure dialogue and discussion about what does that look like and what went well and what could be done perhaps in a different way uh, for the benefit of the teaching assistant but primarily the children's learning so you know having that triangle having that time and having that dialogue the tools in which we're sort of implementing that that practice into, into reality um, and as Claire said, the things we're working on were based around the research done that started in 2014 about best use of teaching mm-hmm. assistants because there was, there was a whole host of information that came out there from fantastic to practice to appalling practice. Yeah. And we're, we're trying to tap into all that best practice, really. Lovely. What then... So we said... Um, that's the the, pro, the process, yeah. I suppose. What if if there is some TAs listening to this? What would there or what have you guys unpicked? I suppose as the primary, the targets or the leverage points or the you know what are you working on at the moment and where do you see those targets going and progressing? So the first one that we looked at is what we call modelling attention. So we thought it was really important that as a teaching assistant in the classroom, 
we should be the models of good practice for the students. So when a teacher is at the front giving their professional instruction or their expert instruction, um, the TA is actually looking at them, modelling what good attention looks like, um, not only to show the students what, what it means to actively listen, but also to ensure that the TAs are watching any live models that are being done so that they then are fully informed to then support the students better using the same language, using the same methods as the teachers. And that was something that you picked up on when you came in to do walkthroughs with us. Yeah, so one of the things we've done is we've kind of tried to link it to, to what we're seeing in school and the kinds of things that we know work. And what we did when, when I first came in was we did lots of paired learning walks and we looked at the kinds of practices that we thought teaching assistants were doing really well, yeah. the kinds of things that really benefited students. And I think, again, we've been on a walk today mm -hmm. and we've seen some great practice in that modelling attention because what we know is that students will look to adults and yes. often they'll try and replicate. So when the, the, the students see the teaching assistant really modelling that attention you can see the students increase their attention on the teacher you can also see the dynamic between the teacher and the teaching assistant really begin to develop but I think for me as well what was really interesting today when I walked around again the teaching assistants because they're listening really carefully to the teacher as the expert then when they go to intervene with students they're just really well equipped to do that yeah. very, very well. So that, that, that's been a huge bonus, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. So it sounds like it's been a really specific back foot approach. You know, from the learning walks yeah. you've done, it's, it's, it's very pres prescriptive for, for, this, for this school. Yeah. Do you see this model, um, it, do you see it being adapted for other schools, how, what maybe what advice would you give to other schools who want to pursue this with teaching assistants? Well, yeah, yes, and well, yes. Do you think it'll work? <laughs> yeah. Do it. I, think, I do think it'll work. I mean, the feedback we're getting from the teaching assistants is that they feel like it's really helping them. And the feedback from some of the children is that it's really helping them as well because they know what to expect from the teaching assistant because we're getting a consistency in approach. Yeah. Um, every, nothing's perfect I mean, there's always going to be variability but it's improving massively so yes to upscaling this and, and looking at other schools yeah, why not yeah. I mean ev every school is under huge pressure mm -hmm. to make the most of their resources and if you know you can you can put something together which is some sound advice which is based on research and based on practice that works then share it because that's the, that's the best way to go um, I'm not saying it, it's perfect and it will need tweaking for different schools because mm -hmm. you've got a different approaches yeah. and different ways of working but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to think that you know, by the end of this year we can, we can reach out towards a trust. We could perhaps go to a, a training conference uh, and share what we've got and see whether other people would like to listen and would like to adopt some of the principles. And you know, we've, we've had that conversation today with, with Helen that to be outward looking, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, what you just said at the beginning, or yeah. what Helen said about you know, creating change, this is an opportunity which we, we could actually do that. I think it's a huge opportunity because what you've got is, you know, the process of instructional coaching is the process of instructional coaching. I think what the school has put at the heart of that is is a sense of actually building the relationships um, with, with all stakeholders, including yep. students, to make that work really, really well because I think what you've always got to try to do is put processes and people yeah. together. If you try and separate them, um, it doesn't... There's no value, is there? I suppose yeah. there's no feeling of, well, literally connection. Yeah, it's a um, lived experience. If it's not lived, it's not happening. Yeah. But, it, but it builds that commitment, doesn't it? And that certainly has come through your, your kind of, your teaching assistant yeah. voice mm. exercise yeah. that you've done. But I think alongside that, it's, it's tempting, isn't it, to always look for consistency. But actually, we should look for continuous improvement. Yes. doesn't matter what your starting point is. The point is that we keep seeking to get better. And I think that's what this model um, allows for. And it's really collaborative, you know. Uh, um, it's, it's about kind of low threat. Yeah. Um, 
processes really to, to support people to become better at what they do to benefit students. And our teaching assistants are really appreciating the, the level of value that we're giving to them. Like we, we're investing this time in them because they're a key part of our school and yeah. we want them to be able to be given the opportunity to get better and better yeah. um, for them and for the students as well. Mm. Um, and they're, they're really appreciating that, aren't they? Yeah, they, they are. That's, that's really clearly evident. Yeah. I think what's interesting as well, some of the work that Claire and Mike have done is um, for anybody who's familiar with the walkthrough books, yes. um, everybody's familiar, aren't they, with the practice steps for particular aspects of pedagogy. And what they've done is, is taken that approach of the practice steps yeah. and broken it down for things like modelling attention mm -hmm. or taking away the scaffolding. And that's been a really interesting piece of work for me to, to just observe in a sense because they've taken something that was there but then really kind of gone for that adapt process to make it work yeah. For, for your students and your context. And the, the quality of that, I think, is, is really great. I think they've done a great job. I, I make no bones about it, it's really good work. <laughs> um, well, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have a, a, a look. I've not read them in detail, but they do. I love the layout of um, how you've set it up. It, it's modelled really nicely on, on the, the books. So that'll hopefully fit, it'll go hand in hand, yeah. and the process is familiar um, and should help the process, I think, as well. And yeah. um, what are you, we've talked about being outward facing, and yeah. clearly we're all quite excited about that to see where it goes within the trust and perhaps wider, but where do you see it going next at Beckfoot? What's your next steps? Well, I guess right now is that scaling back support is a second one and that Claire's already designed the third one uh, which is all based around relationships in the classroom. Yeah so we've labelled that one close collaboration um, which mirrors the close collaboration that the teachers um, are following as part of our TA, uh, 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 the, cut that bit out, um, <laughs> as what the teachers are doing um, in the classroom so I've flipped it and done it from a TA perspective so what can a teacher do to make sure that they're closely collaborating with the teachers in the classroom um, so yeah so that'll go live in February so scaling back support and then close collaboration and then who knows we'll have to mm. get our thinking caps on yeah. yep. and see where we can take stuff. it it's been really good Fantastic. It oh, is exciting. Thank you all so much for your time. Um, it's been wonderful to chat today. I'm so excited to see how it progresses and, and how it develops. Thank you so much. And thanks for all the work you've been doing on it. I know it'll benefit us as teachers loads and the students as well. So thank you so, so much. Uh, have a fab afternoon, guys. Thank you. 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 Thank you.